kind of a bad, a bad ton of luck that two of their players are feeling a bit poorly here today, James. Do you think it's going to affect them? Absolutely. Um, but I'm I'm feeling the upset potential as well. I think this map is is huge for, for Renegades in terms of potential. They've got the double or potential as well with Yam. Let's not forget that. And I think Renegades are a team who I would say have just underachieved this entire year. And I think they they have a potential that they have not yet reached. And uh, I, I expect them to do better going into or in 2017. Maybe this is a start, maybe not. Time will tell. Freiburg, the defuse kit man and uh, high explosive as well, which uh, has become a, a lot common actually. Quite common rather, I can't can speak English. Um, in pistol rounds on the CT side, defuse kit and the uh, HE over the smoke grenade. or. Well, they're not going to drop a pistol since they have the USPs. Yeah, I'm the only nade man for his side. Looking for the double peak. Will there be a flash though? They might go for a flash for sure, but get right could take them by surprise. Because Yam's top mid, so uh, this this could be curious. If Yam's flash doesn't hit get right, then maybe they get wrecked in low tunnel. It's almost as if time is frozen between these two teams. Get right sitting there waiting for the push. They're waiting for get right. It's as if they know they've done their homework and get right as well. Just throwing his gun there. He knows that they're waiting for him. That is quite awesome. Now, both teams will be so far standing strong with the full five. That said, now Pitt's going to find himself a quick angle for a headshot. And everything changes into get right. They go two quick headshots from him. That's not how you want to do this one. And it's just Yam left with 35 health. After all that waiting, they get crushed. Good start for NIP and almost almost no one from NIP saw action in that round, which means lots of people who bought Kevlar will get uh, a helmet for $350 instead of having to buy a thousand. So that that is that is uh, a huge advantage to that round as well for NIP and that does allow them to have a better buy here than they otherwise might do and afford themselves more stuff. So that's, that, that's, that's important for NIP. Going forwards, we have the force buy from Renegades, sans uh, Rike, who will be saving for the AWP, of course. Primary upper for the side. Man, we've had the joy of uh, watching from our own offices in boot camps with his former teams. Renegades with one flashbang. Force buy and one flashbang. So they're looking to do damage to the uh, CT economy. And maybe they'll meet, need that more than normal because of the uh, those cheap upgrades to the armor for NIP. Yeah, I'm creeping, looking to lead with the Deagle here. Praying that somebody from NIP will think, I've got range advantage. And then he gets one shot by Yam. That's how it was going in, in Yam's head there for a moment. But NIP playing it very passively indeed. Their setup is very strong to deal with B splits. Their setup is not so good at denying presence onto the A-bomb site. You can see pits there, but there's no one to actually stop them from actually getting the bomb down as they throw the nades across. Ooh, the pops come in though. There goes Freiburg, oh, but man. Pitts gets himself some taps and that's going to slow them down. Maybe the bomb's not even going to go down here. Oh, this Eagle's putting in work. MIP, the advantage disappears and then maybe there are guns to collect. Yeah, I'm not, not going out just yet though. He needs to get this bomb down for his, ti for his team. He knows where one player is. Not sure where the second one is, so not willing to face. So indeed, he doesn't have the map control. That's a nice one, Dig, but where is the last player? Repositioning himself for short, but Forrest, he's coming in from long. Yam's got a crap gun, but he has the range. He has, uh, rather, he has the uh, health advantage. Man, Freiburg just got, he got ruined running towards the site. Got one Dig immediately, zip him up. That is uh, a very unexpected round win from Renegades. Probably a surprise to, to them as well. Yeah, very upsetting if you're an IP to lose a round like that. I mean, it's... Renegades were quite fortunate. They decided to just go for the push on 2A. And because you got just pistols, it's quite hard to play for information. So you do, in some cases, has to have to gamble it. And they picked the least defensible site in the way that the setup was for NIP. So that, that, that worked out beautifully there for Renegades. Now they just have to run themselves a good anti-force by them, and they will be fine. They'll be uh, you know grabbing some momentum in this one, and all will be lovely. However, Oh, okay. It looks, does look like they're setting up for a straight-up push into B. This is a great way to make the scout less effective. Forrest will not be able to get off too many shots if they play the grenades right before he's got a bunch of T's in his face. We'll see. Forrest trying to be active. Get right with the CZ. Should be good for at least one kill. Tagging coming in from uh, his teammate as well, but can't get anything else. A nice snap there from Forrest. Exist. Can he get the follow-up? No, he can't. 
Pitt and Freiburg remain. Most of the guns in the sight, so that won't help. Pitt's miles away in T-spawn for the time being. Freiburg close. Could be careful of any uh, pushes from these players. Bomb not being planted just yet. Now it is behind the double stack. Scout has been collected. Now Freiburg can try and run distraction, maybe get a wallbang or two. Well, Pitt does what he can. He's got Kevlar and Deagle. Ooh, he's been uh, lining up some shots, but no. Rookie has other ideas, and Freiburg tries to save the scout. Not going to happen. They get wiped out completely. Another round in the bag for Renegades. Forrest gave them a real chance. I think Forrest got about 300 damage or something, at least, in this round. I think he connected with three or four players. And he did get a double in one of his shots. So it, between him and Get Right, they did actually an amazing job defending that. And it's unfortunate that teammates could not clean up the very weakened players, but such is life. NIP now on the save. I like how they've got the single flashbang onto Forrest. Exist had an AG, and he threw it to cover the cross. And that's very interesting that you can see that NIP have a, have a plan here. They wanted to cover the cross. They don't want to give vision to Renegades how many players they're stacking around middle. And oh, their well. play with the flashbang will be to get themselves in the, on mid. But Renegades charge straight into B with two people, so they know where the where the CTs aren't. Arike, very patient, two HP, nerves of steel though. He's ready to rock. That's a great start. That's a great sign from Renegades as well. Not panicking in that situation, just coolly picking off the players one by one. That bodes well. He's got nine thousand dollars in the bank. He'll throw his AK and pick up the AWP immediately. We have Mr. Jerebko shouting out the uh, E-League qualifier. Pitt is AWP, no armor on the uh, CT side on this buy round. We've got Forrest on the MP7. Gun you don't see so often. Better moving accuracy than the UMP. $500 more expensive. This is a really fast timing from Yam. A really viciously fast timing from Yam, I'm sure. I don't think they're going to expect this. He's going to hear all this running. He's surely going to drop down. Here it goes, Yam in from the back. They're all lining up, but Yam's spray comes in. Freiburg turns around just in the nick of time to trade the kill. And the T side for Renegades here, they will go down a man, but they've created quite some turmoil and chaos, and the chaos might be all that JKS needs. There goes Freiburg. Oh, oh this is so, he's got to be so careful, man. 20 HP for him. I don't think Renegades realized that it was a boost in the first place, but then Exist like, I'm here as well. Down to 20 HP indeed, but there's still a round to fight for. The site's been taken by Renegades. Yusilo trying to hold down the uh, short position. That smoke will definitely help. But he's got a wrong angle. Get right straight in the jaw, son. JKS is here as well, but how, much, how many is he good for? Continuation spray not good enough. Get right takes the frag, leaving Rickett alone on the site. He doesn't know where the second player is. He exists on the low ground. How does Rike get himself in position? He spots Get Right. Nice duck as well, but he can't get the frag. He's in trouble. The no scope comes in, and now can he get this one to Get Right? He's got 10 HP. He has to land it, and he does. Rike beasting on the A site. That is gross. Lovely stuff from Renegades. Yeah, a bit of clutch stuff out after a missed shot. I was a bit worried for Rike there, but he pulls it out of the bag nonetheless. That's actually. Uh, I think multiple situations where we've seen Rickard come out huge for his team. We saw the situation with the Deagle and the UMP, I believe, and then uh, the, f the four kills where he could probably easily have gone down with the AK against the Eco after two. And But he holds on to it, and now we see some lovely stuff with the AWP as well. So Rickett, if he, if he continues to be playing like this, there's definitely going to be problems for NIP. He's on eight kills at the moment. NIP onto the Deagles. And we're probably going to see some classic setups from them with those. Presence here towards Catwalk for them. But Silo with this back then could prove some problem, but no, it looks like the Deagle and the P250 is a good combo for NIP. That's going to bring them to a five versus three. And there is real opportunity now for the Swedes. On the plus side for Renegades, NIP abandoned the short position after those frags. That allows Renegades to uh, pick these stronger weapons. There was a Mac 10 in tow that's been disposed of now. NIP moving three people towards the long area, trying to hold down some map control should A be taken. Playing this close ranges. JKS doesn't want to overextend here. This is awkward positioning now. Bomb rotating to top mid. Heading towards short, though, in Rike's hands. Get run Forest, firmly uh, resting on B for the time being. They've got a numbers advantage to uh, the NIP side. And if Renegades, if, if they make it over towards A, Exist is there, but it's going to be awkward for them to uh, hold down A and the short position. So, NIP's... Oh, man! Exist, please! 
He's got teammates coming in and toe. There's no frags, not a single kill. They barely touched anyone in that round. They're running gates. Yeah, I love the approach for NIP that they go five versus three. They don't try to continue pushing or go for the guns or anything like that. They just, just they just hold positions and they force Renegades to have to try to go through these choke points and exist. I was thinking, okay, if he gets one shot, that's gonna make life really hard for Renegades. Renegades still have a chance, but NIP looking good, but he, he just cleans up everyone. As the, oh, just so on point is exist. Mate. Double orb now for NIP, Forest and Pit. That's always scary on Dust 2. We'll have to see how it comes into play. Renegades going for a default, though, with their early movements on the map, as are NIP. I'm going to see NIP, instead of putting three on A, though, we'll get what is better versus the B splits, better for mid presence and having exist on, on middle. And look at this, very fast pace out of the doors. Exist, oh, and Forest defending remarkably well. This is a gritty dust two so far between these two sides. Renegades at massive disadvantages now. Forest with the AWP towards B, Pit with the AWP towards A. What is your play, Renegades? They've got one flashbang as well. That's all the utility. No smokes for short, no smokes for A ramp, no smokes for the site. They've got one flash and it is a gauntlet run. However, the bomb is lurking in B site at the moment. So what are, they, what are they going for here? They don't have the nades for a cat drop. Yam just walks to his death. And Rikke's alone having to uh, walk into the angle. But that's a nasty surprise. Get right charging in. Had Forrest backing him up as well with the AWP. Leaving JKS alone. And we might have Freiburg pushing long. Indeed we do. So JKS, maybe he'll get picked off soon. Horrible round for Renegades. I wonder if... I don't, I think it might be... I don't think they're going to keep the three ops. Surely they'll swap out back for the M. There we go. Yeah, Gerard is going to pick up the M4 in the end. I was, I was for a split second. I was worried that they were going to continue with three offs. It's never really a good idea against a solid team. I don't think, especially not when they're about to go into eco territory. Yeah, absolutely. It just it doesn't really make much sense. But they do go back to the double up. So they're fine. They're fine. Everything's okay. Three to four as NIP start to get some momentum here. They get a clean round here. It's going to be interesting to see how things start to go for them when Renegades get the buys on the way because we haven't really seen too much double orping from NIP just yet. And a uh, quick long take coming in from Renegades. Counter flashes with perfect timing and nades as well. Exist, can he get any frags though? He's flashed, everybody's blind, but he's still getting frags. Freiburg is coming in as well. Two kills for Freiburg. And uh, just the pistols onto Usillo and Azza. They played the numbers game, but the numbers are not in their favor. They have not indeed won lottery. 12 HP on Ustilo. There he goes. Lovely stuff from Freiburg. Three kills for him. Sh shut down. Man buns, I am told. Yeah, I, I, think, I think the man bug is new for, for for rain. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised when I saw that earlier. I was just like, is, is that a thing now? Hashtag parlor. He's got the biggest bun. That's true. Four rounds for each team at the moment. Renegades on the buy after their eco round, but AWPs are not on their side for the time being. If they win the round, high chance they will have an AWP stolen from NIP. NIP is the usual long take. And we're off to a slow start. Forrest looking. Cursory glance down middle for him, but he's going to finally back away. Leaving assist to keep tabs on middle. As he's been doing so well at so far in this matchup. And Renegade's taking some more, uh, more standard timing on their cap control, but they're still much faster than most teams. The, the general pace from Renegade is much faster than most teams from what we've seen in the first eight rounds. Now Pitts, he's going to be put to the test here. If Renegades are on point with this A push, they will have the flashes and the smokes to make Pitts' life incredibly impossible in finding a single shot. We'll have to see. If Pitt gets a couple of free shots, that's probably a couple of players dead. Nice Molotov from Pitt. That may thwart the uh, grenade plan from the Renegade side, but they're going to move into position to go for the short plant. They're checking the Goose position. Nice headshot onto Ustillo. Spots the player um, as a towards Goose, but he's gone back. Bomb planted for short. NIP charging in in the uh, close quarters with Pitt covering for the long range. As it goes down towards Gandalf, that leaves three players left, but one well out of position. That is JKS. He is miles away. Brute force retake, defuse straight away. 
And I love that we saw from Pit the decision making there. He realized he see, when he sees all, like three or four nades sailing in like that, he's like, I don't, I don't need to challenge this. There is, I just do not need to challenge this. He falls back in a way, and he realizes that it's quite a long run, so he doesn't even have time to actually double scope, which you normally see a double scope from his position. But he knows again, he has the cognizance to realize that if in that um, window that he goes for the double scope and has to re-aim he might actually get peaked. And that's exactly what would have happened, but he didn't double scope. Hits a, a pinpoint shot with a single scope and his teammates uh, rebound off of it. It's beautiful stuff from NIP. Very confident retake. And that brings it to a five versus four. And uh, now Renegades, they're in a spot where they have to respect NIP's ability to hold on to the A bomb site when they just run this raw push into the A bomb site. Tactical timeout from Renegades has come and gone. And yeah, lovely positioning from Pierce, and he discouraged Renegades from holding on the site as well, moving back towards short, and allows uh, NIP to run up ramp almost for free. Again, the usual take of long from NIP with the assisted grenades. But it seems that Renegades are going to charge in there. Freiberg may be forced to back off. He's on the corner for the time being, flashed, and he will run away. His teammates too deep towards short to help him at the long range. So there we go, four Renegades players in long. Will they abandon it completely? Will they leave players in ramp? They don't have an AWP. But uh, as a, sorry, uh, Rico will start on the ramp regardless. They've got Ustilo on the, in lower tunnel. And again, you see NIP, they will respond with aggression towards shorts. Yeah, this is a classic response. And the thing as well about this is that Renegades should realize the response. And one thing you can try to do is then as the tease, you can take everybody out along apart from maybe one guy and then try to brute force with four players onto catwalk with grenades because the CTs, it's very hard for them to hold the short position. It's very hard to effectively get kills against grenades. It's, it's very hard to fall back. So it's, it's a, you kind of force them to that spot and then it's favorable for you and you can, you can punish it. However, Renegades are actually leaving two on long and they're deciding to take the three players remaining with the bomb towards the upper dark area. So they're going to run a somewhat of a distraction towards the A-bomb side, trying to pull rotation, trying to occupy players. Ooh. Nice flick comes in from Ricke. Still, he does get traded somewhat easily. And NIP, they now know what's going on. It's get right retreats. Or do they? Get right... It's a trap. Oh, man. man do they not realize? Now they realize. Thank God. Get right straight back in there. Charging immediately into the site, but oh, he almost gets a frag onto Yam Yam in an awkward position. He's still putting in work in the meantime. He's still one of the uh, beasts of the Renegade side. Puts him at a man advantage, but we've got Forrest creeping in the tunnel. He's got two players to find. Spots you still crouching. Oh, it's straight in his dome, son. But they've still got the site for the time being pit in the middle of it, though. As I gets traded, and it's Yam. That clock is not far ticked just yet. The season coming out. Yeah, I've got to be very careful. He needs to stay alive for just a few more seconds, but oh. he can't do it. The kit's there. It's going to be a close one. I think he's got it. Forrest with the retake. That oh, is man. ridiculous. With the last bullet of the CZ, he gets the kill on TM. That confidence. And there must have been a miscommunication as well. You see Get Right, you know, running away from the bomb site, and then suddenly. You know, having to sprint back again, that must have been some miscommunication. Someone must have told him because I think if Get Right was in a position where he could have, he should have been able to hear that the bomb, or at least that there were multiple players going onto the bomb site there. So interesting stuff. Clutch from Forrest there was just absolutely remarkable, and that's going to be putting NIP in a very good position potentially if they're able to capitalize on this round. Quick take on to long position from Renegades. She's still going all the way through there, flash through the smoke, but into the clutches of pit he goes, and Renegades will see that and realize this is a bit more than we bargained for. Yeah, looking to catch somebody out of position on long, but NIP backed off towards a very quickly indeed, and they retain their full team. Still two orps on the NIP side. That, that means they can leave, uh, well, actually, they didn't even get right alone towards B in case. Fast rotation was required. Forrest in position to uh, hold an angle towards ramp if there was any cross from Renegades. And again, an aggressive position towards short once they know Renegades are in control of long. So last time Renegades made this play, it was a fake. This time the entire team is in tow. What will NIP make of this? Yeah, Renegades straight onto the A site. NIP, we've seen them give up the A bomb site multiple times so far. But previously, they did have some control of long. And this time, Pitt's going to be on the short, looking for the shot. Very nice one of boost into Elevator to get a nice angle for NIP to get a frag, but they won't get one just yet. They're still alive with five, though, as Exist tries around the corner. More smokes coming in 
That's going to tell Exist there's one player on long at the very least. In comes the fragging though, but the trades are strong. Still a decent position for Renegades, but just down to Ricker. One versus three. Can he clutch it again? Ooh, he's close, but not quite. Can he make the right guess? No. Pit over the smoke. Takes another round for NIP. Many close rounds, but they keep going the way of NIP. Very strong on Dust2 in the retakes. Historically, we've seen some quite exquisite ones from them, and they're doing well at the moment. They've got loads of money in the bag as well. We have another timeout from Renegades, a tactical timeout. They've got uh, north of $4,000, but less than 5000 across the entire team. That may limit what they can buy. Likely no AWPs. The only person who could drop one is JKS, but then he'd have no armor. So I wouldn't, one would expect five AKs to come out for the side. And double ops continue for NIP. They've not been broken yet. We have seen some great clutches so far from both teams. That one round from Forest was just incredible. And NIP will continue in their double orping ways. Forest staying on his. And often enough, I mean, obviously on the CT side, Pit is going to be the choice for the AWP, AWPing, as he just will play a bit more statically towards A. But when they have enough money, you see Forest AWPing on the CT side. That's because he can be more, he wants to play Ooh. dynamically. Dan, look at this. There's a four-man suicide play from Renegades. They're trying to play some weird off angles to take NIP by surprise, and they picked off Freiburg straight away over towards Short. They continue the charge. Now they meet Pit. Now there's no nades. And Pitt will be tested. Pitt will pass the test for Flying Colors. Gets himself a double. Flashes himself back into long. Very good cognizance there from Pitt. Realizes he's done his job. Now he just has to hold the long position. Doesn't go for the glory play. And once again, NIP, they give up the bomb plant. But they're in a four versus two with the best retake positions they could ask for. No control of long or short for, well, JKS. That's all that remains of Renegade for the time being. How many can he pick off? There's the one of Voice of Flashbang. Is this coming up on the box? And that will be enough. Three players remaining for NIP. Again, there's loads of cash in the bank. They just keep winning rounds with both these AWPs in tow. And they continue their charge. That's six rounds in a row now for NIP. Renegade, though, they're improving the last three rounds. They've planted the bomb, but everything falls apart afterwards. And one of the great things here as well that we're seeing is that typically on, on a lot of maps in Counter-Strike, one side is much, much easier for the retakes and once, and the other side is you want to give it away less because it's much harder to retake it. And that would be the B bomb site on this, on this map in particular. And IP, they're showing us that their retake game for A is so solid at the moment. They're not throwing away any, any risky positions or trying to overextend when they should be getting, you know, map controls. We saw Pit just go for. I mean, and that just gives them such a great situation. And again, right at the start of the round, Forrest picks off a player. That's Yam gone. And it seemed like Renegades wanted to charge into to B, but the smoke will deny them as well. Such an early frag for Renegades. Get right, just waiting with the flashbang at the base at the same time of way through it. And again, the push from Renegades is being absolutely crushed. Not a single kill for them. JKS out of position, trying to cut off rotators. But there'll be no kills for Renegades in this round. And indeed, it only took 36 seconds. Two rounds remain. NIP running out of places to still all the cash on their team. They are playing very well at the moment. They are playing very, very well. We're seeing some awesome clutches. We're seeing great team play. We're seeing good tactics. But we're also seeing from you know individuals like like Pitt in particular, whenever this A site gets taken, he makes the correct decision every single time. He'll get two frags. It looks like it's a crazy flurry of kills. And you could get caught up in the moment, but no, he brings it coolly and calmly into the best decision for then map control. It's just great to see that. And yes. that's that's why they're nine to four right now. Yeah, Pitt's doing a very good job at limiting risk while putting his team at an advantage. Good balance. Speak of the devil and he shall appear. Ricky gets taken down early. No response from the Renegade side. Just Eagles in what remains of the team. Saving money for the last round. That flash will allow them to get closer towards short. But again, it's a gauntlet run. It's all they have afforded to them as they're waiting for Pit to overextend. But it's Pit that will be delivering the one AWP shot to the face. Someone told me he'd, uh, Pit had food poisoning, James. That person is a liar. He is playing amazingly right now. Absolutely amazing stuff. What can you do with the Deagles in this position? Could outpick Orps and AKs. It is also awesome when on the CT side, you get to the point where all your riflers have AK-47s, all of them. That's, that is, that feels amazing. The problem here as well, 
is that uh, picks for Renegades are irrelevant at this point because of the money on the NIP side. They need to win the rounds or it's all for nothing. Desperation play is coming in. JKS uh, still alive with his teammate used to load. Against four, that clock's running down as well, but he's got many targets. But they are the target boards themselves and they will be riddled with holes. 10 to four, last round of the first half coming up. We'll see what kind of buy at running games can muster. And I feel all they have to keep doing is just keeping on track with what they have been doing. I mean, they've, they've been giving space to Renegades, but in spots where they always know, okay, if we give up this amount of space on the map, then this is our the optimal reaction that we have to we have to then execute ourselves. We have to perform ourselves. Very good at, uh, at understanding that, where the openings are, and Renegades being put to the test to try to defeat. It's good, this uh, brilliant Dust 2 play we're seeing so far. And Forrest has been Largely unchallenged in middle as well. That's something else to take into account here. Whenever he wants to play the AWP um, in middle, he often can get his pick. This time he's going to fall back a little bit. As once again, Renegades take Catwalker. The timing that is fast for most teams, but somewhat standard for them. JKS lurking around long. Freiburg is there as well. And Pitt's been playing short and long with the AWP, so maybe Renegades think there is a hole in the armor towards A, but they've yet to find it. Minutes on the clock. Three players around short for the Renegade side. JK is deploying a flashbang, which will pull Pitt away from short for a brief time. But he's back in position. Exist in CT spawn. Rick is still lurking towards the B for timing, and the bomb seems to be rotating as well. Going for the cat drop into the arms of Exist. Exist can't carry as a, looks like it's going to be a trace all over the place. Forrest has a lot of shots to make. He pulls out the CZ, finds himself a quick one. Now the AWP comes back out as he circles his way around to the doors, but denied by flames at every turn. Finally finding himself an opening towards the window as Renegades set themselves up post plant, but it's only two players. Forrest emerges, Forrest strikes. Four kills for him in the round, and NIP close it down. The problem is you've got Forrest on one side of the map, Pit on the other side of the map. Where do you go? There is nowhere to go, not in that half. 11 rounds for Renegade, uh, for NIP to the four of Renegades. That is a very strong performance for an NIP who might not even be firing on, on all cylinders considering two of their players are not feeling very well today. So Pitt will be hoping that this match is over sooner rather than later. There is a pistol to come though. And anything can happen in that. NIP now afforded the freedoms of the T side. So maybe uh, life would get harder for Renegades. There may be a short delay, though, before this pistol round starts. And there's so much freedom for NIP to operate within at this point. On, on Dust 2 as, as T side, you know, as soon as they get the orbs rolling, as soon as we see Forrest on the orb, if he's continuing in his position and in, in the confidence that he has, then he's going to give the team openings. And then from that point forwards, it's all about understanding how to play off of them. And NIP should realize that. And here we can see the, you know, the two best performers individually from both teams, obviously. Pitt was absolutely killing it, just holding the A side of the map. And Rikke, although he had some great clutches here and there, obviously it was an 11 4 scoreline, only four rounds for Renegades. A lot of those openings, a lot of those clutches, they didn't really amount to much. NIP were too overwhelming. We see the upcoming matches today. Optic will be uh, heading up against Tyloo. That'll always be interesting. Tyloo with a uh, very local style out there in Asia. Mass Sports, Hellraisers, and then G2 versus Godsend to close out the day. Eight matches coming your way today, and we are in the middle of them now with NIP versus Renegades. Renegades got four rounds, then NIP got 10 in a row. Yep. You talk about momentum. The unpause has come in, and we are good to start the pistol nice. round with uh, Renegades. Time for them to defend. They've opted for five Kevlars. And again, we have uh, a T half, a T team, starting with two plays on grenades. Freiburg and Get Right <laughs> will be the utility men. You gotta love Forrest. Forrest's eyebrows. Best eyebrows in CS, perhaps. Now, what is the play here? Again, we talked about previously the double nade man situation for the T side is so common to see. And that's what we see here. Freiburg and Get Right on the nades. No raid bosses, though, but they do have bullets in Azza's face, and he will promptly fall back and away to the A's site. Ooh. 
not looking good here for NIP. Losing two men immediately, but NIP will try to power through regardless. Are they going to abort this like they are? Back to catwalk for them. He still is over towards the A site, repositioning from the ramp. And he's got himself in position just in time. But there's no one in long for the CT side. That's worrying for Eustelo. Puts him in a very awkward position and limits how he can peek. As is coming in for support, but he's heavily tagged. Forrest waiting around long. NIP have time to play with. Maybe giving some time for Renegade to uh, perhaps make an error. Maybe Renegade's wondering if they've over-rotated. Now the get right's coming out. And Eustelo will take him down with ease. Lovely positioning from Eustelo, playing the off angle. And it pays off. Exists now with the bomb alone on shorts. I've seen him do crazy things on this map, so don't want to count Exist out. Although that Glock instead of a USP will be quite hard to make things happen with. Forrest, he can be the man, though. He's got good engagements. He's matched close distance. Can he get the kill onto the bomb site? Eustelo, a couple bullets. And now that's going to allow Exist to move forward. He's just trying to crunch Eustelo here, constrict him from both sides. But it's going to be Forrest now who's alone against three more players. Has to get the aces. Two HP. Can't get tagged again. Finds himself a frag as he goes down, which will afford him a scout and uh, perhaps a flashbang in the force by. But Renegades will win the pistol round. Now the question arises, will Renegades have a better time of things on the CT side once the buys have come for both teams? As they're picking up the MP9, you still over the MP7. Seeing a bit more MP7 these days. Triple UMP on the other players. Nothing but SMGs and lots of utility for Renegades. A stark difference to what we saw from uh, NIP on their second uh, round, although that was a failure in the first half. One of the four rounds at Renegades strung together oh so long ago. This is actually a very scary round because uh, uh, Forrest could have just about afforded Kevlar as well. He has the ability with the scout to open things up to get tags. So this this is definitely quite scary. Renegades cannot put a foot wrong. They've got to be very cautious and they can't really play ranges very well. Oh, that is a pretty nice nade though. Could have been a bit better pass, but that's I'll take that. 50 damage to exist and uh, 20 to get right. Pretty good. Yeah, and Renegades, they're relying on their utility, at least at the long ranges. Yeah, I'm over towards the B-bomb site. He's got a Molotov. Rike, not really in a position necessarily to pull out a high explosive grenade unless he backs off towards long. He's holding A on his own for the time being as in CT spot. There's a HG grenade. He's going to land in time. It is. It exists out of 4 HP, so he has some great work indeed. Can he hold that bomb site though? There's Freiburg. Failed the first mission. Exist pops off though, and as is there with the MP9, it's got that moving accuracy. Forrest picks up as well. Can the bomb go down for NIP? Oh, gonna try to get it down. Pip comes off it though because he has no time. He knows that. That could have gone a lot better for NIP. So fortunate for Renegades that despite all the chaos and madness, they were able to get themselves the victory with only two players lost and no bomb plant for NIP. I almost felt like NIP were gonna win the round. I mean, they got such good positions there. But it is indeed the 11 6 Renegades with the first couple, and now it's a full save for the NIP side. They've purchased a flashbang, and you might expect them to go for a plant play on on Catwalk with a run boost or something. That That is quite a familiar uh, play. And some teams do this, as we see Aze, play aggressively with an SMG, knowing that they don't have Kevlar, to prevent them from making a plant based strategy work. And <laughs> this is a good way to do it. In they go. Easy does it. That play from Azza just reminds me of the, the TMP runs. TMP runs through Lower Tunnel. If you ever did a TMP rush back in the day, let me know. Standard standard affair for me, of course. Would you expect anything else? Rookay straight on the AWP. Upgrades being had from the CT side. Big round for Renegades. Opportunity to really catch up if they can break the buy of NIP in this round. Forrest with the scout versus Rickey with the AWP. See if he can find himself a headshot. Nothing doing, just jet in mid. This is a very fast timing here for NIP down into middle. What is the plan? Are they going to try to go through the double doors? Looks like the pop flash being set up by Get Right at the moment for Pitt to go out there. Let's see if Pitt can get anything. Out he goes through the smoke. Still flashes from all over the place. Pulls out a flashbang in an incredibly exposed position. What on earth is going on right now? NIP start to make their way onto the A bomb site at the same time. Pit disorientated, but still manages to get himself onto the CT spawn position. But Azza is quicker to the trigger. And now it's going to be NIP with three players still without a bomb plant. Very confusing start as far as Renegades are concerned, but they still got 
a two-man advantage despite the bedlam caused by NIP. Bomb found it for short though. No control of long, but Freiburg may be looking to take things back. Molotov's got to be careful. Only 7 HP on him. Can't get single kill though. Does some damage, but that's it. Exist alone. Too heavily tagged. Can't get anything done either. Just one pick onto the Renegade side. It was a big round. Not only did they win it, but they won it with four players. That is huge for Renegades. Just when you thought they were, well, they were down. Definitely not out of it though. Yeah, and it's definitely a, a somewhat disappointing start for NIP, as you can see the look across some of the players' faces, Forrest and Pip, but they have yet to get the AWP onto Forrest, and their play style is going to change dramatically in that position. Previously, we saw them with the aid, with the scout on Forrest, and they played a very fast round, trying to get you know Pit into CT spot. He's blind for about five, five or six seconds. I had no idea where he was. So very, very chaotic indeed. But when the AWP comes down to Forrest, I expect to see much slower rounds as NIP really start to play their pick, picking style, but... Loss of utility now for NIP. I wonder what the plan is here. Yeah, that is a boatload, a boatload of utility. They're heading towards maximum loss bonus, so they can afford to spend all this cash in this round. But do they have a plan around it? They've lost a the player early. They're using a lot of flashbangs towards the middle area, maybe trying to force Renegades out of position, potentially split a site. But the bomb's gone down, it's on the floor at the moment, as a charging through City spawn. That'll be a weapon loss. Only two players remaining though for NIP, and it's Forrest with a P250 and 14 HP, so nothing much for Renegades to worry about in this particular round. JK could get picked off, and DD will straight through the smoke. But uh, I'm not sure if Forrest, if there's anything more for him to do in this round. He could go and collect that weapon from JKS, but just want to charge to his doom. Renegades pick up another one. May three away now from equaling NIP's score, but NIP themselves are five away from winning the, the map of Dust 2 against Renegades to claim their first win in this Swiss system. That is three wins and you're through, three losses and you're done. So a lot's on the line for every single map that you play and every single win is going to be important here for NIP early on just because especially against a team like Renegades very beatable team for them I'm sure they would like to secure it get some security in this major qualifiers and indeed we're seeing a much slower round now that that Forest has the AWP as is in a boost position not the normal one but a boost position, well he was, he's moved now, in CT spawn. He's been in CT spawn for a number of rounds on the uh, on the CT side here of Renegades. Rikke now over towards A with his big green gun. He's got one flashbang as well, should you still require it. Maybe he can slow down a push towards short as well, but he's only got that one flash, so whatever he chooses, he must choose wisely. Freiburg Pit and Forest around a short position. Exist lurking behind the pillar towards B in case any push comes in from the CT side. No such intentions at the moment, it seems, from Renegades. Just passive, waiting for NIP to play their hand. It's quite cool from Renegades because you can see as well that they they respect and realize uh, that the situation could involve Forest with Norb, that NIP will be playing picks, and they themselves are playing very passively. NIP now trying to clear the spaces, get some info as to what the setup is like for any case, but they're running out of time. They really have to just kind of go for a blind play at this point. They can't sacrifice any more time here. As is going to push the smoke, and in he goes. He doesn't even need to do anything. It's JKS all day as Exist finds himself onto the B1 side. But the split comes in again. As are not quite ready for that one. Pit with the double, and all of a sudden, opportunity strikes. 15 seconds, uh, 12 seconds to plant the bomb. Pit, can he make it? Yes, through the doors and onto the plant, and now it's a retake situation. It looked all over for NIP, but they somehow brought it back thanks to Pit. Unbelievable how they got themselves into this position, but surely the cat drops coming from Get Right. These Renegades players, their days are numbered. There goes Eustillo, Rike now, he is sandwiched. The Nurse comes in, but insta trades. NIP will take that all day. I thought the round was done for when the bomb is lost in the middle area, but uh, there goes JKS, and as a, I think he was positioning himself for a flashbang, but the timing was not right. NIP extend their lead once more. Both teams on the buy. Double orbs coming out, but it's not Yam on the second orb. It's Eustillo. Oh, no, he has, he's... Uh... Wait, am I going crazy? I thought I saw an orb. Maybe I didn't. Yeah, I must be wrong. Four rifles and the uh, one AW AWP onto Rike. So we'll see if Renegades can get back to winning ways. Their money has pretty much been depleted for this round after this round. They do not want to lose this. They cannot afford to lose this. Yeah, that would that would definitely change. I mean, if they lose this, 
that's probably a tie game situation. So all the, the lead just evaporates. Playing it much like the last round, although you maybe wouldn't want them to just due to the fact that in the previous round, they left themselves in a spot where we've got no picks because Renegades are playing very passively. Renegades are forcing us to go for just an execution of some kind of a split or a set piece onto a bomb site, And we have 30 seconds to do that now because we waited for so long. So you, they need to arrive to that position previously. And then we're actually seeing an upper dark push coming in from Renegades. Rick L leading the charge there with the orb trying to open things up. Should there be anybody there? But there is no one there. So now this tells Renegades that with this timing in the round, everyone's either on, on catwalk or long, you know, readying themselves for a split. So when NIP now start to take the disadvantage the longer they wait. NIP looking to push long shortly, exist and get right. Coming out now, Ustolo avoiding the flashbang. He's got one of his own, does great work and he can still get flashes from his teammate. If uh, Yam has any, there's another pop flash, get right, completely blind. Still gets a spray though, looking for the transfer as well, but Yam will trade, giving his team the man advantage. Freiburg has to go back for the bomb, which I think Rikke have seen and maybe taken down in the first place. He will rotate elsewhere. Now we've got the CTs all over the place. They've abandoned long and NIP are charging up short. Big place we made here by the remaining two players of NIP. A fast approaching three members of Renegades make life hard. Freiburg gets himself the double on the trade. That's big work. Does he know where Rick is coming from? He's expecting long, but now the shot's missed by Rick and it gives the positioning away. Freiburg makes it happen. Great stuff there for NIP. A round they sorely needed and will be delivered to them by uh, no less than Freiburg himself. 13 to 9 the score. Freiburg just went nuclear and look what that's done to Renegades. They couldn't lose that round. They've got like $3,000 each. That is brutal. Yami yeah, had the shot as well. You heard him fire one off. It's NIP with the, with the timeout. Maybe just uh, composing themselves. But that was absolutely mental. Freiburg with a monstrous performance there. Four round lead now. Likely to be five. Looking at the money of Renegades. I like this timeout actually because they're in a spot where they know it's eco time for Renegades, or they sh maybe they're actually maybe it's them actually saying or confirming it by looking at the scoreboard whether it's they're playing against an eco or not, or some kind of half buy situation. And you never you don't want to throw that away when you're 13 to nine and your economy is still not secure. So for them to just take every precaution to win this next round, I really like that, even if it is just to prepare themselves for the anti anti eco. Game time for NIP, anti-eco time for NIP. JKS with a smoke and flash. Other than that, we have mostly P250s. NIP with time in the bank. Renegades with a short push as Enrique coming in. But uh, NIP not really venturing towards the lower tunnel and they don't necessarily need to because they've got Forrest watching the doors and Freiburg has gone through the suicide position to this angle. Again, if you don't have, if you have an AWPA, in T spawn, but nobody's around the suicide position. You can't see a short push from the CTs, which is why Freiburg is in this position to stop that from being a possibility. Bomb kept out of sight for the time being as well. Should there be a push, they won't know the bomb's there. Not really a place they'd want to hold it anyway. And this is actually from the old days when Threat first introduced anti eco anti force spy sy uh, systems into NIP. Uh, you started to see an evolution from, from them where they basically play. Uh, very passively at the start, and they mix up the pace at the start just to see if there's aggression. Oh god, Forrest is moving very close. It makes me a bit worried. Flash comes in. for oh, the frag still made though, but that will trigger everything. Forrest comes out with a pistol to cut murder two extra players. That was not what was supposed to happen from Renegade's perspective. They get the AWP, but on Yam, who's got seven points of health. Forrest's defense there. That's all they needed. That is uh, a, quite the play from Forrest in a high pressure situation. Pretty much cleaned out the round, but you have to give credit to NIP's positioning at the main time of two people just waiting outside B. Great hold from Forrest. And that puts them two rounds away from taking this match over the line. Rike back on the AWP. And now we have the uh, scope from Pitt. Magic's boy was tweeting earlier saying, screw the AK, I'm playing Krieg tomorrow. And maybe Pitt <laughs> has been inspired by that. I love that, that's awesome. I I definitely agree with this. It's actually really fun. It's actually really fun to play with the scope. Look at it, James. It's glorious. I prefer one that isn't so pink, but uh, myself. That's actually the same skin that I use, actually. I'm not judging, no. I, I have a Star, a Star Trek one as well. I have the, uh, the yellow one. The plain yellow one. I can't even remember what it's called. Pit has better taste than you. That's all I'm saying. 
This is the this is the round though, James. This is the, this is the round for Renegades, where you could you could argue that they have somewhat equal footing on the weaponry. And NIP there getting closer and closer, breathing down the next to Renegades. The flash comes out. As is going to stay there. What a cool setup this is. I love this setup from Renegades, but it's going to be denied. Freiburg coming in with a double. Rick is going to stand up very tall right now to even the situation. NIP moving towards the A site and get right's going for biggest flank EU. Flanking all the way around EU to back to North America, in fact. There's a, there's a nice pop flash, which I'll talk about later, actually, because there's still action to come here. What is what is the decision from Renegades? Are they going to go for this? Or are they going to play against match point? That's a question. The Shadow reveals Rickay's position. And get right. Easy for get right. That leaves JKS and Yam in a two versus three. We've got some players who are tagged here, but JKS is the only person with a defuse kit. Look where the bomb is as well. How do you defuse this bomb? Ah, oh, they've got the smoke off the pizza sign. Will he check do so? Off angle from Forrest, and he's going to get the kill. He was drawing his gun, but still manages to headshot both players. Sometimes nothing goes your way. Freiburg has been playing so well from an entry perspective and the clutch perspective on the T side. The CT side was all forest, it was all pit. In many respects, you know, it all fell to them on the either the A or the B side of the map respectively. But Freiburg has been doing some great work, some high impact fragging from him in uh, some of these very tight rounds, very important rounds. And now we see Quad Yump. Uh, yump, yump. <laughs> from Renegades. That's never a good sign, nor is that. Another headshot found by Mr. Forrest, as the round is starting off quite well, to say the least, for NIP. Is this the end for Renegades on Dust 2? Not the end of the tournament for either side, but, uh, well, we'll see if they can hold on. Some flashes towards long. Rickey gets the kill, but he's rocking a scout at the moment. And how much can we expect from him with that? Pushes through the fire. Pistol kill could come in, but he can't find a frag onto Pit. He's just standing there with 4 HP. Somewhat all good for NIP at the moment. Check it with more frags. He'll get traded, though. That leaves Rickate alone with the scout jumping. Gives his position away, and that will be that. Pit with the final kill there. 16 to 9 in favor of NIP. Very strong performance from the Swedes. Yeah, the CT side impressed me so much from NIP. They played it incredibly well, and they backed up great decision making, with great team play, and great performance. It's always going to be tough to play them when they're in that form on Dust 2. Renegades had some great rounds, but it was clear today that NIP had just the better form on Dust 2. Good early starts from Renegades on both halves, but after that, it was all NIP in this round. Thoughts of the desk after the break.